Hello everyone, it's the YouTube Nobody, Just Jargon here, and today we're going to be talking about something that's blown up recently. Well, recently, in quotes. Storytime animators, and the drama around them. For those of you who don't know what a storytime animator is and somehow also watch me, though I'm assuming this is a minority of you, they're basically people who just talk about themselves through semi-animated videos. I say semi-animated because their way of animating is bare bones in terms of, well, animation. Most of them only use a series of uncolored stills and backgrounds, and a majority of the movement is reserved for lip syncing. However, this is hardly a complaint simply because this genre would not exist otherwise. Animation in general was practically killed off on YouTube when a change in the algorithm was made to favor watch time and upload consistency, which are both inherent disadvantages to animation because of how long they take to make. I think I figured out how to finally succeed at YouTube. Being an attention horror with clickbait and stolen videos? How to succeed at being an animator on YouTube. <laughs> Come on! You know that's impossible! What do you think I'm doing right now? I'm talking to the audience. Oh, you're doing one of these things. Yep, animatic storytime videos. But since this, storytime animation has been slowly creeping up from the depths of irrelevancy and is now in the public eye. YouTubers such as The Odd Ones Out and Domix come to mind as pioneers. And today, the genre is one of the most popular on the site. And to be fair, I can see the appeal. For artists, the idea of storytime animations must seem really great. You can showcase your work while also talking about various experiences in your life that may interest people. I can imagine that this type of content would be perfect for someone seeking to separate themselves from the rest of the YouTube crowd crowd by making their content personality driven. Too bad a lot of other people had that same idea, because with insane popularity comes... copycats. To be fair though, the story time aspect at least means that the video has to have some originality, so it's not like it's a million eight-year-olds playing Five Nights at Freddy's hoping to be the next Markiplier. Each channel has its own approach to things, but overall I'd say a lot of them are similar in terms of personality. Turkey Tom mentioned this in his video as well, by citing the awkward introvert as the cookie cutter approach taken in these videos. Awkward personalities. Honestly, this is a good criticism. All of these channels seem to have the same awkward, look at me, I'm an introvert personality on their channels. All right, let's stop beating around the bush here. Tom gained a massive amount of attention from his video and justifiably so due to its quality. Then Mark made his, and now I'm making my own. I have a theory that the three of us are caught in a never-ending cycle of plagiarism, which can be seen in the subscriber review videos that we've all made, and I started. But aside from this, and those sweet, sweet views, I'm making this video because I think the grievances presented by everyone so far are less to do with the people they mention and more to do with the fact that the story to animation genre was created as the only realistic alternative to fully constructed animated YouTube videos. And because of how popular it's gotten, there are bound to be people who try to cut corners when starting off, and seemingly many more who slack off when they gain popularity, regardless of how, you know, small of an amount of popularity they gain. Hey, that's me. Though the same could be said about any common video genre. Like I said before, the Let's Players are a good example of this. Both Let's Plays and Storytime videos became extremely popular in relatively the same amount of time, though in different eras, and started an entourage of people attempting to do the same. You can critique these channels all you want, but the problems are always going to exist as newer channels pop up riding off the fame of the genre without knowing the, you know, <laughs> rules, quote unquote. They'll then blow up in subscribers and perpetuate these issues further. That being said, let's actually say what those problems are. The largest critique directed at the storytime animators is simply that they can't take criticism, which again is more to do with the people than the types of videos they make. But I can see this point being valid considering who exactly gets told this, and that's almost all of them. The bigger channels, at least. The best example of this is The Odd Ones Out, or James, who immediately ceased all contact with Ellis Mark after he'd made negative comments about the animation community. So yeah, after I uploaded the video, The Odd Ones Out on Twitter unfollowed me, and I asked him what he thought of the video, and two days later I got a reply. I'm not gonna show the DMs, but I'll basically summarize what he said. First, to, to all the people saying, wow, well, James, James is such a good sport doing a line in this, I can't believe he actually decided to do it, that's very nice of him. If you're one of the people, like I was in the video, saying how cool it was of James to, to voice a line in a video not being the nicest towards his community, if he could go back, he wouldn't have done the line. 
And hey, nobody is mean to loser Mark except me. If the people who have the most influence in the community reject their critiques they're given, that doesn't exactly set a good example for things when little Billy watches and decides he wants to become a storytime animator too. It keeps the cycle going though, I'll give it that. But aside from the specific issues with specific creators, this is pretty much it in terms of critiques. And that begs the question, why has this been such a hot topic recently? Well, aside from the drama with people such as Spetchy and Fox Goodman lighting the flame for the roast of storytime animators, I don't quite know. Maybe it's just because storytime animation has become the newest popular video genre, which inherently opens it up to ridicule by the masses. Since there's a lot higher likelihood that the negative aspects are going to be noticed when you have this many people making this type of stuff. If this video somehow gets the attention of any potential story to animators out there, which actually isn't too unlikely given the fact that a lot of people subscribe to me are actually animators. Okay, here's the weird thing. Why are so many of the people who subscribe to me are animators? That's actually quite cool. Put some effort into your stuff if you're not doing it already, and try to take criticism with an open mind rather than pushing back against it under the grounds that people are blindly hating on you. LS Mark, more like loser Mark. Ha <laughs> I freaking was making Minecraft videos before you. Who's the real winner here? I don't know. In fact, this applies to any channel and real life too. But with that out of the way, let's move on to a more arguably drama encrusted topic, which is the people who critique the animation community. Some of these channels are fine in terms of presentation, though the monotone voice of one channel in particular gets a bit grating after a while. That's right, we're talking about the one and only Turkey Tom. <laughs> He's hardly the first person to talk about the animation community, but his video garnered the most attention, so I feel like it's the best place to start when discussing this smaller yet still prominent community. That being the community who, you know, criticizes storytime animation channels in particular. Now, if you want context regarding the situation that's led up to this, then too bad, because there really isn't any. Like I said, I guess several channels like Spetchy and Fox Goodman have opened up the whole community for ridicule, but again, most of the complaints are with specific people, so a lot of this isn't warranted. And aside from nitpicking and bandwagoning, the storytime critic community doesn't seem to have any real problems as a whole. But in my opinion, it doesn't need to exist. It seems as if a lot of people are convinced that the storytime animation community specifically is a breeding ground for subpar content, which it is, but it's no different from any other community on the internet. It's just one of the larger ones. So this trend of critiquing storytime channels specifically is largely pointless and repetitive. But anyways, let's move on to the next topic, which is Turkey Tom specifically. Cause let's face it, I don't have enough material to make this video work otherwise. <laughs> uh. I need like this video to be 10 minutes or else it's, I'm, I'm not gonna do it, it's not gonna do shit. So consider what I'm about to say as me pointing out examples in the community as a whole. Whether it be the commentary community or the story time critic community, Tom is not a special snowflake in the mistakes he's made and if anything is to be taken away from this, it's don't do what he's done recently. I'm not the only one who's brought up Tom in the past, but as somebody who knows the guy personally and is heavily biased in that regard, I didn't think I needed to or should for that matter. I was originally planning to interview him and get his opinions on the backlash he's been receiving for his you know, recent actions, but I decided against it since he told me he'd be addressing it all in his Q&A anyways. And if I can't add anything to the conversation, then what's the point? <laughs> I don't know why you're laughing. But after the Q&A came out, I decided to lick up the table scraps by making a video getting more into the specifics of the situation. The first of these things that came to mind were the negative tweets he made to Spetchy during the production of his first video on Storytime Animators. The actual tweets can be seen on screen now, though he deleted them later. Many called him out for this simply because it damaged his credibility in the video he made and it made it easy to see why Spetchy would have banned him from her Discord server the way she did. It kind of made Tom's comments on the matter seem a bit dumb. And while writing the script for this video, I thought, hey, what if I did a little investigation to see if my claims bear true when confronting Specie in person? I was very nice, I was very polite as I stated before, I just asked some questions, and I was banned three minutes later. Real classy, Specie, real classy. He did vaguely discuss this a bit in his 50k subscriber special, but let's discuss a few of the details. So, the Specie tweets, was that before or after the video? Uh, it was before I even had an idea of making the video. I think I think I tweeted it like a month and a half before the video came out, ish. No, no, she kicked you from Discord because of that, right? Uh, I I don't know. Um, I'm trying to remember. Oh yeah, actually, I think the uh, the admin did tell me that was one of the reasons. So yeah. Do you think it would have been good to mention that in the video then? I mean, it's definitely in retrospect, I think it would have been I, good. Yeah. I mean, you know, being Captain Hindsight here. Uh, <laughs> 
as I always am, you know. Obviously, in retrospect, it would have been good. I think uh, I did actually plan to put it in the video, and I was in the Discord call with Daft Pina reviewing it, and um, I did intend to oh, put it in. Um, and I'm not actually sure why I left it out. Um, I mean, I'm not gonna say you know I like forgot or anything because I don't think I I don't think I did. Maybe it was just an audio issue. Uh, my oh, guess yeah. is it just got cut in audio recording. Um, but, uh, I mean, obviously I should have included it, but I also don't think it's as pertinent to the video as others have let on, like, yeah, I mean, uh, considering how I was trying to talk it out with Speechy in the server, uh, you know, implying that I was going there just to fuck with her, I think was a little disingenuous. You know, no, yeah, and, and I did apologize, I did apologize to, um, I did apologize for it, so I don't, you know... I mean, yeah, the, not, at, the, at that at that point, the drama sort of topic was dead. I'd apologize for the tweets mm -hmm. uh, privately to Speechy's boyfriend, Papa Timmy, um, and uh, you know the, the drama had sort of been settled. I think the video would have been helped a lot because there was a huge lack of communication between Manga Common, and there was a lot of information he didn't know behind the scenes, mm -hmm. uh, which he admitted um, in the comment he made. So you know, uh, yeah. The second thing I wanted to bring up was the doxing. In Tom's video on Digibro, he revealed that there was a Kiwi Farms post that gave Digi's address away and stated that he wouldn't link it or show the address because he doesn't encourage doxing. A lot of people point out that if Tom didn't want this to happen, then he shouldn't have mentioned the address at all. The post details a first-hand account of someone who claims to have lived with Digibro, and as proof, they even left a link to where he lives. Now, I won't reveal where he lives as I am highly against doxing, and I also will not leave a link to the post in the description because I do not want this guy to be harassed or anything. If you want to do some digging yourself, to find the post and get the address, then it's all up to you, but I don't encourage it and I do not support it. Now, even though this address is old and Digi has moved several times since this point, this didn't seem to affect Tom's decision of how to talk about it. When you put in uh, Digi's address, like, and I know it was the old, an old address, which a lot of people don't seem to know, and you mentioned, you know, you're, you're against doxing, did you think that maybe it would be best just not to include the address? Uh, yeah, but, I mean, at the same time, I didn't really see it as a big deal, and I still don't, because it's his yeah. old address, and, yeah, and it's already public, it's already public, like, it takes 10 seconds to get there, so I said, basically, don't dox him, but, um, it's not hard to find his dox if you want to, yeah, I mean, but, I know YMS made a big deal about it, but, uh, yeah. I think um, that was one of the weaker points against the video in general. There's a lot worse. I'm going to get to that. What I am curious about is, did you know it was an old address? Because it seems like the way you talked about it, you didn't, it was kind of like you found out afterwards that it was an old address because you added like a text that says this is an old address. So would it have been any different if it was his current address? Gone well, if it, was current, if it was his current address, I'd say yeah, but I think that's public too. Uh, uh, yeah, okay. So, um, I mean, it would have been different, yeah, but... I don't. I don't know if it would have been that big a deal. It's not like I'm the first person to come up with it. If it was yeah. his, for, if it was his current address, then yeah, I wouldn't have even talked about it in the video probably. And yeah, I did. I did know it was his old address. Um, okay, okay. When I when I addressed it, yeah. In this same video, Tom also got backlash for, well, pedophile accusations. His main argument of the Digibro video was that lowlies equate to pedophilia, which makes Digi a self-admitted pedophile. As it turns out, Digi here is a self-admitted and proud lover of children, or as he calls it, a lollycon. Essentially what this means is that he is sexually attracted to lollies, or little anime girls, something which he seems to proudly state considering that he posts about it so often on his Twitter and actively defends pedophilia as if it is okay and should be accepted by society. I don't really feel the need to explain how disgusting this is because nobody in their right mind should be okay with fucking children or even thinking about fucking children. And maybe you're going to say, oh, well, it's not really pedophilia. He's just attracted to them in anime. No, there's no difference. If you want to fuck kids, you want to fuck kids. There's no gray area or nuance with this shit. He's fucking repulsive. Now, I've already made my stance on this subject known, but it's important to note that regardless of one's opinions on this topic, it's still unethical to call someone a pedophile without definitive proof of any actual, you know, crimes. You know how there is a stigma around the word pedophile and all that stuff, and so I know you changed the thumbnail, but do you think that maybe having that be like the epicenter of the video was kind of overdoing it a little bit? Um, not really. I think the video overall was poor for other reasons, but uh, I do think that Digi is by definition a pedophile. Obviously, a lot of people are going to disagree no matter yeah. no matter what I say, you know, but this is, this is the way I see it. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying he's going to go out and fuck real kids, but I do think lollycons uh, in general are pedophiles. Um, 
you know, Digi doesn't. Digi says, you know, when I'm debating him, he says, I, I, I'm just attracted to lines on paper, right? Yeah, that's uh, yeah. Just, I, that that I hated that that debate. Yeah, and I was I was terrible in the debate. To be fair, I I I, did, I kind of. Uh, I just genuinely don't think there's anything that anybody could say to Digi because just he just cannot. He could not get it through his head, and I think he was arguing the idea of that it's not harmful, and you were arguing the idea that it's pedophilia in concept. I think what he was arguing was that he's technically not a pedophile because he's not attracted to real kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I think the statement, you know, is is I'm not saying he's attracted to real kids. Yeah. Uh, I'm not saying, you know, but if you're a lollycon, you're technically attracted to the fantasy of having sex with a child. You know, it, I'm not right. saying that lollycons are child predators or that they yeah, they're going to be on like Dateline thing... NBC with Chris Hansen or anything like that. I'm just yeah, saying but... that in concept. He's a fucking pedophile, and he's attracted to the fantasy of having sex with a child. So that, I, I, can, I agree with you it. that lollycons are in concept pedophiles. But here's the thing: I don't know if it's fair to plaster the video with the you know with pedophile and all that stuff, and then to, to to argue something that in concept you know that has no application to you know real life. If at least if Digi is being truthful. Yeah, what for I mean, sure. And the term pedophile has such a negative stigma. Like it people does, yeah, and that's... automatically assume like child rapist or shit like that, which is not what I'm saying. And I, I, I don't know, think I... but I'm, I just mean like that's what other people are going to think. And I mean, and that's the that's one of the, I think the issues that a lot of people have with the video is because you're arguing for something conceptually when the term pedophile is is most of the time is people just assume, you know, you know, child rapist, essentially. Oh uh, yeah, for sure. Which that's, that's it just, sucks that I didn't explain that. I wish I'd elaborated on my points more. Um, yeah. But at the same time, I kind of feel the bluntness of the video was necessary given the person I was talking about. Yeah, I, uh, I kind of I can see what you mean there. Now it was at this point that I realized this was my chance to confront him about the allegations of being a double agent. Had Tom conspired with Asperger to commit 9-11 and evade my detection when I confronted him about it? Had Tom actually been the one coaxing Staxolotl into plagiarizing me? Did you conspire with Asperger to commit 9-11? And e even when I specifically tried to coax Asperger into admitting what he did, 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 you, did you conspire to do that? Uh, I, I can neither confirm nor deny these allegations. But were you the real person behind the rampant plagiarism that has been going on recently? Uh, that was not Staxolotl. The, the real person behind the rampant plagiarism is, uh, uh, <laughs> it's E-Rich. E-Rich e is behind the plagiarism. E-Rich, huh? Hmm. Mm-hmm. You have to talk to E-Rich about this. I know, like, nothing about E-Rich, so dang it, now you've made me do it. Now I'm gonna have to do a whole nother section of the video where I talk about E-Rich. Dude, this squirrel is, like, dancing on its head. You heard it here first, folks. Turkey Tom canonically confirms that he conspired to commit 9-11 and mentored Staxolotl into stealing my content to break the cycle of plagiarism. Anyway, that's it. Goodbye. I love it. Keep doing it. Keep it up. Keep it up, bro. You're the best.